Hallelujah. 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 Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia! 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 Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia! Alleluia! Welcome to St. Andrew's Worship here in Encinitas, California. I'm Brenda Soul. I'm the rector here, and we want you to know whoever you are, wherever you are on your faith journey, you are welcome here. We are so pleased you decided to worship with us today. You'll find a bulletin online at standrewsepiscopal.org. Please join us now in singing the opening hymn. Welcome, happy morning, each to each shall say. Hail to day is vanquished and is won today. Oh, the day is living, God forevermore. In the true Creator all his works adore. Welcome, happy morning, each to each shall say. Earth her joy confesses, clothing her for spring. O fresh truth, sweeten with the returning King. Bloom in every meadow, leaves on every Succession days of lengthening light. As in passing moments, praising in their flight. Brightness of the morning, sky and fields and sea. Vanquisher of darkness, bring their praise to thee. Welcome, happy morning, each to each shall sing. Meager and redeemer, life and health of all. The Father beholding human nature's fall. Of the Father's Godhead, true and only Son. Mankind to deliver man who didst put on. Welcome, happy morning, each to each shall sing. Thou of life, the author, death didst undergo. Train the path of darkness, saving strengths to show. Come and true and faithful, now fulfill thy word. Tis thine on the morning, rise, O Mary, Lord. Welcome, happy morning, age to age shall say. Loose the souls of prisons bound with Satan's chain. Now that now is fallen, rise to life again. Show thy face in brightness, bid the nations see. Bring again our daylight, day returns with thee. Welcome, happy morning, each to each shall sing. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. 
O God, whose blessed Son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of bread, open our eyes of our faith that we may behold him in all his redeeming work, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Listen. John. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are all God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he was revealed to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. We will now pray the psalm responsively in half verse. Answer me when I call, O God, defender of my cause. You set me free when I am hard pressed. Have mercy on me and hear my prayer. You mortals, how long will you dishonor my glory? How long will you worship dumb idols and run after false gods? Know that the Lord does wonders for the faithful. When I call upon the Lord, he will hear me. Tremble then and do not sin. Speak to your heart in silence upon your bed. Offer the appointed sacrifices. And put your trust in the Lord. Many are saying, oh, that we might see better times. Lift up the light of your countenance upon us, O Lord. You have put gladness in my heart. More than when grain and wine and oil increase. I lie down in peace. At once I fall asleep. For only you, Lord, make me dwell in safety. A reading from Luke. Jesus himself stood among the disciples and said to them, peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, why are you frightened? And what, and why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that is I myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he said, said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy, they were still disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, have you here anything to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish and he took it and ate in their presence. 
Then he said to them, these are my words that I spoke to you while I was still you. I'm oh, sorry, I'm still with you. That, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets and the poems must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures and he said to them, thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and rise from the dead on the third day and that the repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed and in his name to all nations beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The word of God. Thanks be to God. Come, Holy Spirit, take our lips and speak through them. Take our minds and think with them. Take our hearts and set them on fire. In the name of the Holy Trinity, amen. It's great to be with all of you again. As many of you know, I was back in northeastern Montana visiting my dad this past week, who is recovering from COVID. When I wasn't at the house clearing out all of the accumulated clutter, I was at the nursing facility playing cribbage with him. For a guy who could barely speak three weeks ago, he did pretty well. Dad first taught me how to play cribbage about eight years ago after mom died. I remember those first several games when he'd have to point out to my cards lying on the table and say, do you see that? You have another 15 there. Or, do you see that? You have a double run in your crib. In those early days of learning, I needed him to help train my eyes for what to notice. Over the years, I've improved my cribbage game by playing an app on my iPad. And it's a good thing I did, because now the roles have been reversed. This visit, I was the one asking, Dad, do you see that? You have more points there. Look again. This wasn't the first time our roles have been reversed, and I know it won't be the last. But fortunately, we've been preparing for this role reversal all of my life. He is the one who taught me how to fill out a check blank, how to balance my, checking, my banking account, and how to drive. Each time he introduced me to a new skill, there would be a lot of, do you see that, along the way. These role reversals are also part of our discipleship journey. Some of Jesus' most well-known lines are about role reversals, such as, I no longer call you servants, but now call you friends. And of course, there is, because I, the master, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. Both before he dies and after he appears to them post-resurrection, Jesus is preparing his disciples to continue the work he's begun. And all along the way, he says, do you see that? That's what healing people looks like. Do you see that? That's what caring for those who have less than they need looks like. A similar thing is happening in our reading from 1 John today. In fact, the passage starts out by asking us to take a closer look. It reads, see what love God has given us. The three books of John are all about insisting that if the early church communities would take a closer look at how they were spending their time, they'd realize they were doing the opposite of what Jesus had called them to. Historians and scholars believe these communities were consumed with infighting. In particular, there were a group of Gnostics who believed Christ was only fully divine and never actually human at all. Those people wanted Christians to separate themselves from the rest of the world, and they declared the body bad. The spirit was what they were after. The offer of First John is basically saying, stop your fighting. What's important is the depth and breadth of God's love. People are watching you. Do you realize how you look to others? They don't yet comprehend God's promise of hope, so you have to help them see. You are loved. Help train their eyes to notice that. 
the explanation continues by laying out the idea that if we are fully gods, we will be without sin because Christ will grow within us and there is no sin in Christ. Then there are these warnings about those making false proclamations. The passage cautions, little children, let no one deceive you. The tone is very endearing with this talk of being children of God. And yet the challenge is clear that we are all to mature in our faith so that we can share God's love, grace, and mercy with the world around us. In our reading from Luke today, the do you see that is extended by the risen Christ in order that the disciples trust that this really is the resurrected Jesus among them. To help them see, Jesus gives them the opportunity to touch, watch, and hear him. He says, touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones. Then he asks for some food so they, they, they so that they can watch him eat. And finally, he repeats the same words he said to them in the past. Jesus, in the form of risen Christ, does all these things as a way of saying, see that? It's me. You can trust that I am here with you. And then the passage continues. He opened their minds to understand the scriptures. Our collect of the day says says it this way, open our eyes of faith. This is the role reversal we are called to as Christians. We aren't simply welcomed in as children of God and given the luxury of remaining dependent on God to do everything for us. Rather, we are being prepared. Scripture reading by scripture reading, hymn by hymn, sermon by sermon, prayer by prayer, that we each have our eyes of faith opened. And in doing so, as my dad did for me, we will help others train their eyes on what to notice. And what to notice is the depth and breadth of God's love. See what love God has given us. Amen. Let us now proclaim our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and life of the world to come. Amen. Yes, we pray to you, Lord God, for all the people in their daily life and work, for our families, friends, and neighbors, and for all those who are alone, for this community, the nation, and the world, for all those who work for justice, freedom, and peace, for the just and proper use of your creation, for victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. For all those who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, friendless, and the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. For Michael, our presiding bishop, and Susan, our bishop, and for all bishops and other ministers. 
for all who serve God and God's church. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others, including those on our parish prayer list. Repose of the soul for Elaine McLevy, Jeffrey Teitelman. Prayers of comfort for the McLevy family, Teitelman family. Prayers of healing for Francis, Drew, Dickie, Cayetano, Mother Brenda, Jim, Barbara, Bill, Hildy, Karen, Molly, Liam, Karen, Pat, Frank, and Michelle. We also pray for those who are affected by this pandemic, for those who are suffering or have died from the virus, for those who are mourning the loss of loved ones and the healthcare workers serving on the front lines of this response. Almighty God, to whom our needs are known before we ask, help us to ask only what accords with your will and those good things which we dare not or in our blindness cannot ask. Grant us for the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. of the Lord be always with you and also with you. We have a few announcements this week. One is that this is time for our virtual offering. We rely on your generosity to keep our ministries vibrant and strong and helping our community. So we thank you for mailing in your pledge payments, for making a pledge, and for uh, giving gifts of any size. Thank you so much. We are starting a new book group um, on the 21st of May, uh, excuse me, April. We will do that at 7 o'clock every Wednesday. The book we're going to be reading this session is called Teach Us to Pray. It's about looking at the Lord's Prayer, a historical view of it, and coming um, from underneath of it and looking at some of the traditions around us. So I hope you'll join us. Look for the Zoom link in your email. 
We are also starting an Episco Basics class on April 25th. That will be at 1130 to 1230 every Sunday for four weeks, starting next Sunday, the 25th. If you are interested in being confirmed, received, or renewing your vows as an Episcopalian with the bishop in May, this is a required course. But if you are not interested in that and you'd just like to come and do the Episcopal Basics class, we'd be happy to have you. It will be following coffee hour on a Zoom link. Our tradition here at St. Andrews is to offer a blessing for those celebrating birthdays and anniversaries. So this is for those of you celebrating birthdays. Watch over your children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall. And in their heart may the peace which passes understanding abide all the days of their life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And for those of you celebrating anniversaries, Eternal God, look with favor upon the world you have made, and especially upon these couples. Give them wisdom and devotion in the ordering of their lives together, that each may be to the other a strength in need, a counselor in perplexity, a comfort in sorrow, and a companion in joy. Grant that their wills may be so knit together in your will, and their spirits in your spirit, that they may grow in love and peace with you and one another all the days of their life. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And now as we gaze upon this bread and wine that has been previously consecrated in a Eucharistic prayer, we pray together this prayer of spiritual communion. Lord Christ, we believe that you are truly present in the Holy Sacrament. And since we cannot at this time receive communion, we pray you to come into our hearts we unite ourselves with you and embrace you with all our heart, our soul, and our mind. Let nothing separate us from you. Let us serve you in this life until by your grace we come to your glorious kingdom and unending peace. Amen. The blessing of God Almighty, the Creator, the Redeemer, and the Sustainer be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us go forth rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.